second part of numerical methods where we discuss single and multi step methods for solving differential equations specifically we discuss uh, numerical techniques of solving ordinary differential equations the basic uh, problem is to solve dy by dx is equal to f of xy given the condition y of x0 is equal to y0 for y of x1. So, you are given the differential equation first order and then a condition we call it an initial condition. The problem is to find y at x1. So, geometrically how can you visualize this? When you solve a differential equation, you get what is known as a solution curve. This is known as the solution curve. At x naught, we know y naught is declared. At x 1, we find y 1. y 1 is nothing but y calculated at x 1. If you take the difference between x1 and x0 as h, then what are the possible methods by which we can estimate y1? So, we have as uh, the title shows single step methods and multi step methods. Multi step methods are generally iterative in nature, whereas single step methods estimate y1 in one single go. So, let me first write the list of single step methods followed by multi step methods and then briefly describe the mathematical technique which goes into the calculation of y1. So, let us say we talk about single step methods. As we are trying to understand single step methods estimate y1 in a single go. So, in this we basically have the simplest method known as the Euler's method. The Euler's method, so let us first uh, look at Euler's method, one of the simplest methods uh, to estimate y1. So, y1 is approximately given by y0 plus h into f of x0 y0. This uh, is actually coming from a linear approximation of this curve. Therefore, it is not supposed to be very accurate. Then we have Taylor's method. Which gives y1 as y0 plus h y0 dash plus h square by 2 factorial y0 double dash and so. The number of terms that is to be taken in the Taylor series will depend upon the accuracy to which you are estimating y1. Let us go to the next single step method. Uh, we have what is known as the RK second order method. This is another single step method and according to this y1 is given by y0 plus delta y where y0 is already known to us and delta y is given by half k1 plus k2 where k1 and k2 are given by h f of x0 y0 and k2 h f of x0 plus h y0 plus k1. So, you estimate k1 and k2 where h as I already told you is the difference between x1 and x0. f of x0 y0 comes from this f of xy. We know x0 and y0 from the condition. So, once you estimate k1 and k2, estimate delta y by this rule and add delta y to y0 and you will get y1. This is what is known as the RK second order method. It is still not as accurate as the next one that we are going to see. We now take up the RK fourth order method which is considered 
a better improvisation of the second order method. So as you can guess, it goes very similar to second order. Estimate y1 from y0 plus delta y, y0 is already known. Delta y comes as one sixth of k1 plus k4 plus two times k2 plus k3. And let us see the formulas for k1, k2, k3 and k4. k1 is the same as the k1 of the second order method. k2 is hf of x0 plus h by 2, y0 plus k1 by 2. k3 is hf of x0 plus h by 2, y0 plus k2 by 2 and k4 is hf of x0 plus h y0 plus k3. So once you estimate k1, k2, k3, k4, you find out delta y and then use this delta y here to find the value of y1. So the single step methods estimate y1 in a single go. It is not iterative in nature and if you sequence this method in the order of their performance, Eulers will be perhaps the poorest, followed by the second order RK, followed by Taylor's which is much better, and then finally the RK fourth order method. We will now have a look at the multi-step methods. Let us come to the multi-step methods. The multi-step methods basically do not produce Y1 in one single go, because uh, several approximations go into that and therefore the accuracy is compromised. Multi-step methods are basically iterative in nature. Now let us see what is the modified Eulers method. According to this, y1 first iteration is y0 plus hf of x0 y0 and then y1 second approximation is y0 plus h by 2 into f of x0 y0 plus f of x1 comma y1 first approximation. So it is basically nothing but the average of the slopes. So you find out f of x0 y0 to that you add f of x1 comma y1 first approximation which comes from the previous step. So if you go to the next step everything is intact but here you will have f of x1 comma y1 second approximation. So let us write the general rule. y1 kth approximation is y0 plus h by 2 f of x0 y0 plus f of x1 y1 k minus 1th approximation. In fact, you must do so many iterations the two consecutive y1 estimates are the same. Suppose the third and fourth are exactly the same. So you can stop. You do not have to go to the fifth. So the last stabilized y1 value is taken as the final y1 value. So till you get that stabilization you keep on iterating by the modified Eulers method. After this let us go to the next multi-step method is known as the Picard's method. The Picard's method is iterative and it approaches the estimation through the process of integration. So y1 first approximation is y0 plus integral x0 to x f of x comma y0 dx. Now y0 is a numerical value. Which, is comes, which comes from the initial condition. So you can integrate f of x comma y0 because this is a constant and what do you get? You get a polynomial, a polynomial or a function of x, not necessarily a polynomial. You get a function of x as y1 first approximation. Now you do the y1 second approximation like this. Remember y1 first approximation comes from the previous step as a function of x. 
So that function of x is substituted in this location and then this function is integrated. So you'll get another function of x. So each time you apply the Picard's method, you keep getting functions of x which are getting better and better. Now, how many iterations to be performed? So after you do some two or three, you keep on evaluating these y1s at that given value of x, that is x1. Okay, so when you substitute x1 in this function, in this function, the next function and so on, you will ultimately reach a stage where the numerical value of y1 has stabilized for that particular x1. So then you stop and say this is the best value of y1 that we can get. So this is how the Picard's method works. So basically it produces functions to the process of integration which are used for estimating y1.